Now there can be very few who do not know the name of King Arthur, King Arthur and all of the Knights of the Round Table, but his father, Uther Pendragon, was the greatest of all kings that ever lived, and he had a great court that he held in Wales, and I'll tell you this, inside of that great court there was no one better than Sir Clagius. Sir Clagius, who was so generous, who would give anything to any man who needed food or drink or shelter for the night. And when it came to Christmas time, there was no one so generous as Sir Clegius. He had a strong back, and he had a ready hand that you would place in his own purse to place presents upon the table. And when it came to a Christmas time, there was no one refused entry at his door and each and every one who passed that way would be sat at the table and given fine food to eat and wine to drink and they would be given presents, fine presents, presents of golden coins or, or silver bracelets and there was nothing that could be given to them that would be better than those things that they would receive from Sir Clegius. Now Sir Clegius, as you might have gathered, was rich. He had uh, a lot of land, he had many farms, he had lots of baronial halls, and Sir Clegius would welcome all and any, and especially at Christmas time. Now it so happened that there were many wars, and wars need to be paid for. Sir Clegius didn't wait. What he would do is he would sell some land, he would sell a farm, he would get rid of any houses that he was not living in at that moment in time. And with selling all of this land and uh, of his homes, he soon found himself unable to be as generous as he had been in the past. And the parties and the, the, the times that he would gather people together by candlelight, by the side of his great roaring fire, people would come, but they would be disappointed for the presence that they would be given would not have been as good as they had been in the past. Sir Clegius, being such a wonderful man, would apologise. He would apologise for the fact that the gifts that he gave were not as rich as those that he had given in the past. But soon word went around that at his great gatherings the presents were not so good, the food was a little sparser, the wine not the best, and then Uther Pendragon died. Always grateful, always grateful to what his good friend Seclegius had done for him. But now it came to the point where year by year he would have to look to his family and say we have no money, we have no land and I can only give you small presents. By this time no one would come to Seclegius for they would find other people and in the way that those friends who are only faithful when money is involved, they seem to drift, drift away. Drift away as, as the rain drifts from a puddle under the bright shine of the sun. And it came to a time when Sir Clegius was living in a very poor farm and the rich clothes that he had upon his back were now old and ripped and torn and he had a beard upon his chin and to be honest, any of his old friends would not have recognised him if they had gone, if they had gone to his old farm. But none of them chose to. They found other people who would give them gifts. Sir Clegius knew that if he was to pray to God, then he would find uh, some kind of way out of this terrible place that he had found himself, and his family, and his children. He stood in front of them and said, My wife and my children. I shall go to that quiet place and I shall pray. I shall pray for some kind of miracle for you and me and we as a family. And off he went to a small mound that was at the edge of the farm where there was a cherry tree. Now Sir Clegius, he bent himself upon his knees and he prayed, not just for himself but for his wife and for his family. He prayed that some great miracle would come about. And when he opened his eyes and looked about him, nothing was changed. He was disappointed, he, he was sad, and it caused a pain inside of his heart. And he staggered back, and as he staggered back, he pushed his hand against the cherry tree. 
and as he pushed his hand against the cherry tree, he could not believe it, for in the heart of winter, there it was. The branch started to rustle, the buds started to sprout, the leaves and the blossom flourished, and there he saw in front of him cherries, cherries in the heart of winter, when it was so cold and he knew that a great miracle had come about. And he reached towards one of the cherries and placed it in his mouth, and it was the sweetest thing that had ever laid upon his teeth and lips and tongue. He didn't wait for a second. He ran back inside of his house and got a basket, and he pulled all of the cherries from off the basket, uh, all of the cherries from off the tree, and placed them inside of the basket, and put a cover on top of the basket, and ran and told his wife of the miracle that had happened. She was very pleased for him, but she was a wise woman. She said, I know that it's many years since you have been inside of the court of the king, but I think that such a miracle would be greatly rewarded if you were to go and see King Arthur, if you were to go and see him, for he would treat you as his father before him, Uther Pendragon. You would be welcome inside of court. Sir Clee just looked at his ripped and torn clothes and the grime that lay upon his hands and skin, but he, he was so enthusiastic, so excited, that he did not wait to try and wash himself or clean himself, and all he wanted to do was to take those cherries to his lord and master, King Arthur. As he went along the road, people would look at him and think that he was a tramp or a beggar. They would shoo him out of the way, but he had a purpose inside of his heart and he knew that he was going to travel far towards the great castle and see his lord and master king arthur but when he came to the great castle there barring his way was a soldier a soldier with a sword at his belt and a lance in his hand he said get away get away king arthur doesn't want to see the likes of you you're a beggar you're a tramp upon the road go away you're not welcome here now Sir Clegis spoke. But I have a gift here. I have a gift that I will give to the king himself. Oh, ah, what is it? Oh, I have brought for our lord and master, I have brought cherries in winter. Cherries in winter, you say? Let me look at them. Here the soldier put down his lance and he pulled back the cover over the top of the cherries. Well, let me taste one. No matter though, they ain't poisoned, oh, they're as bitter as salt. The soldier reached forward, took one of the cherries, and it lay upon his tongue. Oh, King Arthur would give you a very good reward for that. I'll let you go into the castle if you promise me that you'll give me a third of whatever the king gives to you. But mind you, you've got to give it to me bigger and better and stronger. The soldier was thinking all of the while of the gold that King Arthur would give to Sir Clegis. And so, thinking that to take two-thirds of a great reward back to his poor farm and his wife and his family would be better than nothing. And so he went on his way. But when he came to the keep itself, 